Right, welcome back, everybody. So a group of South African scientists at the Green Hill Laboratories in KwaZulu-Natal have discovered a new way of tracking COVID-19 hotspots by using the sewerage system. So by testing fecal matter, these scientists are able to trace the COVID-19 hotspots in the country. Science detected sars cov 19 to RNA in sewage in June this year when they conducted a full service virus risk forensic program. The pilot trial entailed collecting fecal samples from wastewater treatment works in Gauteng, which was then tested at the laboratory in KwaZulu-Natal. So let's get an understanding of all of this. And uh, one of the scientists working on this research is Dr. Sean Hrunink, who is uh, obviously joining us via Skype, I think. Good to have you. Thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Hrunink. Thanks for having us, Ian. All right. So I suppose the question needs to be asked, what prompted the idea to start testing fecal matter for the coronavirus? Yeah, and the Dutch Water Research Institute back in February, March, uh, published a paper where they successfully um, detected viral RNA from SARS-CoV-2 in their sewage. Um, this was picked up by a group in South Africa called Amanzi Kroll, who is headed up by... Um, Um, with Barney Day and Professor Anthony Turchin. They approached us um, back in May um, to ask if we, if it would be possible to replicate that protocol in South Africa. We studied the protocol and said, yes, let's try it. Um, and then by the end of May, beginning of June, they sent us five samples to trial um, and we followed the protocol, which involved uh, concentrating the virus, uh, extracting the viral RNA and then detecting it via PCR. Um, so three of those five wastewater treatment works that were sampled from Cal 10, uh, we picked up a positive application. It's, it's quite incredible, actually. I mean, give us more of an idea about how you were able to actually go ahead now de- and detect the, the, the virus hotspots with this kind of testing. So the idea being that um, there's, there's semi-defined communities that are serviced by each wastewater treatment plant. Um, if we can track the viral load within each treatment works, whether that's increasing or decreasing or staying constant, we can then pass that information on to the Department of Health to say, look, this community is a potential hotspot. We can see the viral load is increasing there. Um, please send more healthcare workers into that community. We will continue to monitor the other communities where there may be no or the viral load may be stable. Um, but this community looks like it's a potential hotspot. Uh, so please focus your interventions there um, and just concentrate your resources in that community while we monitor the remaining communities. So, I mean, this is, this is happening now while, while, as we speak. I mean, are these the kind of things that are, are being put in place to actually monitor different communities and hotspots? Yes, yeah, so there are a number of groups across South Africa um, working on it. Um, and we have presented a report to the Department of Water and Sanitation, um, and I'm just waiting for engagement and feedback um, from, from that side. But yes, the idea is that we can roll this out nationally uh, to assist the government in dealing with the pandemic. How much of the infection do you actually need to find in the sewage system to identify this and actually declare it a hotspot? The, the amount of virus to be detected is um, it's still something that needs to be determined. Um, we are actually working on increasing our sensitivity in the lab, um, so decreasing the limit of detection where we can detect um, levels of the virus. Um, so, so, and we're also working on quantifying that so we can actually ascertain from week to week whether that's increasing or decreasing. I mean, I, I suppose uh, it would also depend on, on how many people are actually serviced by that particular sewage system. I mean, if there are a couple of, of communities and, and areas that share the same sewage system, it, would it make it more difficult yes. to actually identify exactly where it's coming from? Yes. So we are working um, through a monthly call, um, Proportio and Instraserve. Um, there are a number of water engineers and hydrologists within that partnership. Um, so they would be able to take the information that we give them. So we can say there's, for example, 33 viral copies per, um, per five milliliters, for example. Um, we can then 
hand that information over to the, the water engineers who can extrapolate that back um, to the population based on the flow rate that's gone through that uh, water, wastewater treatment works. Um, we're still not, internationally, we're still not sure exactly how much virus is shared by feces and at what stage of infection um, that shedding is, is, is happening. Um, so it does become difficult from that point of view, but from a, a relative point of view, we can determine within a population, within a defined population, whether that level is increasing or not. So, so this is this is an important question. I mean, everything we we've looked at and said, and how you're able to to actually find out if areas are infected and if they are hotspots through sewage. Now, the question is: Can COVID nineteen actually be transmitted to humans via a sewage system? I mean, because some of the visuals we were showing as well, sewage running in the streets, some of the sewage systems not working very well in South Africa, and we know this, this is unfortunately a fact of many communities. Is this highlighted as a danger? Can COVID spread through fecal transmission? This is something that um, scientists around the world are still working on. Um, However, in all likelihood, um, the virus that is found in sewage and in wastewater is unlikely to be infectious. Um, this is based on work that's been done previously on the SARS-CoV-1, so the 2003 outbreak, um, which which found that the, the SARS virus is not is not very viable in wastewater, and um, especially after it's been treated. Um, so it's highly unlikely. Although there is a number of there are a number of workers around the world still looking in still looking at this. Yeah, and I, I know there's also the, the talk that, you know, going to the toilet, I mean, whether or not people can actually pick up the virus in a toilet, assuming that a positive person had used that toilet before you, then you go, and that has also been highlighted as a danger. I mean, uh, is there still evidence around this? What, is, what, is, what are the studies around this? So um, they're still looking at, uh, so far they've been, they've been able to detect um, virus in, in fecal matter itself, obviously, um, but they have not yet been able to say that that virus is viable. Um, so, obviously, again, um, this is evolving all the time, um, especially since the pandemic is only six months old. Um, so, scientific uh, work is continuing all the time, but in all likelihood, it's not it's not a danger. Having said that, obviously, good hygiene is is always always good advice. Very much so. I mean, that's a, that, that, that's the the number one thing to to try and save you from this is good hygiene, isolation, and all of the all of the things that we've been told. Now, you touched on it very briefly, but perhaps you can share a bit more that your laboratory has shared the research results with government. Have you heard anything? Are there any sort of uh, developments in terms of a meeting or talking with them? What's the what's happening there? Um, so, Monty Paul have presented the report to the Department of Water and Sanitation. Um, and I said we are waiting for feedback. Um, some meetings have been set up and postponed, um, ironically, because there was a case of um, COVID-19 um, and uh, various other matters uh, within the department. Um, so, we are still hoping to engage with them um, to assist the government and work with them to, to um, deal with the pandemic um, nationally. However, we are also um, approaching um, uh, private stakeholders, um, such as housing states, mining companies, etc., cetera, um, where they can all use the same service um, to mitigate their own risk within defined communities that they, that they serve. Yeah. Interesting to see what governments say about this. Just finally, the, these, um, these, these tests and the results are obviously being conducted here in South Africa. We don't have to send this abroad. Uh, it, it's something we're doing locally. Yes, yeah, so that was one of the important things we need to establish is that we do have the capability and the resources to do this testing in, in South Africa. Um, prior, to, prior to us um, managing, Prior to us detecting virus in, um, in sewage, there was a number of companies looking at doing the testing overseas. Um, but obviously, the, the, the cost is exorbitant to get um, to get that potentially infectious material um, over to Europe for testing. So it was a major breakthrough that we can do this in South Africa. We don't need to rely on international labs to to provide the service. 
Listen, Sean, this is a, a great development. We look forward to, to hearing more about this, watching what government have to say and, and whether or not this is added into the tracing formulas that we use. Thanks, and well done to your team. We look forward to seeing more. Thanks again for joining us here on the okay, program. Thanks for having us. Absolute pleasure. Dr. Sean Hrunink, who is a scientist from the Green Hill Laboratories in KwaZulu-Natal. Interesting conversation. Talking to us about identifying COVID-19 hotspots in the country by tracing them via the sewage system.